Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, exciting day for uh, Kansas State, an exciting day for uh, a lot of young uh, men and their families to to sign with uh, Kansas State. I'm going to go through uh, the list of guys. We had uh, uh, three kids from Texas, two from Kansas, two from Georgia, two from Nebraska, two from Oklahoma, one from Colorado, and one from Pennsylvania. We didn't have any surprises at all this morning. We knew we were going to sign uh, 13 guys and um, uh, all 13 of those uh, young men signed uh, early this morning and uh, got a chance to visit with, with them. And I know they're excited about uh, the opportunity to get started here with us. So we'll just kick it off right away and start with uh, Drake Beckwith, uh, offensive lineman uh, from Colleyville, Texas, Grapevine High School. Uh, he came to camp, uh, did a great job for Coach Riley at camp as a big offensive lineman, was very physical, really athletic, He's got some ties to the Kansas City area, um, and so he's been over here a few times, came back for a game, and uh, we're really excited about getting uh, Drake here uh, as we have really done a nice job with our offensive line, getting some more guys in our class. Uh, the next guy is Jake Clifton from Owasu uh, High School in Owasu, Oklahoma. Um, came and visited us in the summer. Coached by Bill Blankenship, and, and uh, a number of us on our staff have known Coach Blankenship for an awful long time and, and, and one of the icons in the, in the profession. And uh, Jake is a really fast linebacker. He really plays well in space, uh, will strike you, a really smart kid, and, and we're excited to uh, continue to add depth to the linebacker room. Uh, next one is, is Jalen Clem, uh, offensive lineman uh, from uh, Pine Richland High School in Pennsylvania, in Mars, Pennsylvania. Uh, Jalen's a coach's kid. His, uh, his dad is the offensive line coach for the Steelers and uh, very athletic, uh, really smart, physical, um, big guy that is going to really uh, help us in the offensive line. He came to Kansas State uh, just uh, on a visit just a couple weeks ago, and uh, he was one that was selected for the U.S. Uh, uh, Army All-American game and was down there for his signing um, today and then goes back on January 8th uh, for the game. Uh, the next guy is a pretty familiar name in Sterling Lockett. We're so excited to have uh, uh, Sterling here and continue the legacy uh, of the Lockett family at, at Kansas State. Uh, his, his dad uh, played here, his uncle played here, his brother uh, played here, and was with the, Tyler's with the Seahawks. And um, Sterling came to camp, did a phenomenal job for us at camp, really good really great route runner, smooth, catches the ball really well. We'll utilize him in the slot and um, just so excited to, to keep that tradition going with the Lockett family here and getting Sterling. So uh, next guy is Braden Lofton, uh, a tight end from Omaha, Nebraska, Lewis Central High School, which is in, in Iowa. He also came to camp, um, really rangy guy that you can flex out, put on the ball, uh, playing space, he really can run well. They won a state championship this year. He was really instrumental there. Uh, we're excited about Braden as we continue to enhance the tight end room with uh, with big athletic guys that can run. Uh, next guy is Colby McAllister, a uh, defensive back from uh, Clearbrook, High, Clearbrook High School in Houston, Texas. And uh, uh, Colby's been a three-year starter, um, really physical corner, knows the game really well, has tremendous speed. Um, we look for him to be a leader already in the secondary, just a, a really mature kid and excited to have uh, Colby uh, joining us as well. Uh, Garrett Oakley, a tight end from Columbus, uh, Nebraska. And uh, uh, Garrett, uh, also a player that came to camp. Um, really good athlete, played on the ball, played flex, flexed out, creates mismatches, and um, really excited to get uh, Garrett to to join Braden and, and uh, upgrade that uh, tight end group with athle athleticism and, and size and physicality and, and ability to run. So uh, next one, uh, Toby Usensama. And uh, Toby is a linebacker from Wichita East High School in Wichita, Kansas. He came to camp um, and really excited us at, at camp, did a phenomenal job. His high school coach is Shaq Reed, who played here. Uh, Toby's uh, a, a long, really explosive, fast athlete that uh, uh, has that size already. And uh, Toby's going to be a really big kid. He's 6'3", 210, and he'll be a 230-pound guy before you know it. And uh, really excited to um, get a guy out of Wichita East High School. Next one, John Pastore, 
from Erie, Colorado, uh, offensive lineman, uh, another one that came to camp, did a great job for Coach Riley. He can play multiple positions. He's a versatile guy. He's 6'6". He's close to 295 pounds already. Play guard, play tackle, really good feet, really good hands, uh, physical player, and uh, excited to get John to, to join the program. Uh, V.J. Payne from uh, Buford, Georgia, Buford High School. Uh, they just won the state championship down in Georgia. It's a powerhouse program. Uh, VJ does everything. You know, he plays safety, he can play linebacker, he'll, he'll blitz, he'll cover, runs and strikes people, plays all over the field, uh, came on a game visit, and uh, uh, so excited to, to have uh, VJ. They just won the state championship last weekend, so excited to have VJ join the program. Another guy from uh, Georgia, from Jefferson uh, High School in, in Georgia, uh, Jordan Perry. Uh, Jordan's a 6'2", 190-pound a uh, guy that we're going to play at, at safety. He played both ways in high school. He was a tremendous running back as well as defensive back. Uh, he was one of the guys that visited in the summer officially but then came back unofficially on his own for a game visit. Uh, and uh, really talented athlete that uh, um, can really run, will strike at great speed. Uh, excited about Jordan joining the, the program. Uh, Donovan Ryman from Enid, Oklahoma. Um, had a great senior year. We're, he kind of came on the scene. I know we'd been talking to him for a while, but just watching him flourish throughout his senior year, uh, he had 15 tackles for loss, 10 sacks. He's 6'4". He's close to 230. Uh, came for a, a, a game visit, uh, speed off the edge, really good hands. Um, and uh, we were excited because he's a guy that uh, um, we were on and uh, were able to get here late in the season for a visit. He really enjoyed it and uh, – uh, he's going to really help us on the defensive front. And then uh, uh, Kobe Savage, uh, defensive back from Paris, Tex Texas, uh, Tyler uh, Junior College. Uh, Kobe visited us this past weekend. Uh, extremely versatile safety, um, can play man coverage, uh, can tackle in space. Uh, he's kind of the quarterback of the defense uh, for Tyler. Great personality. You guys are really going to uh, like Kobe, and uh, I think he'll be able to help us immediately. So, um, that's the, those are the 13 guys that we signed today and uh, excited about uh, those guys joining our program. So we'll take some questions. I know the first uh, when you talk about you wanted to really recruit this team uh, in the program. Is there a certain thing you wanted to tackle or just a certain attack? Well, we were trying to hit a little bit of everything. Um, and uh, offensive line, we wanted to continue to build with some length there uh, and getting some guys that are 6'5 plus really helps us there. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the linebackers getting some some height and some some size at linebacker. And, you know, we obviously we just have 13 guys, so we have more work to do. But we're excited about uh, these guys that signed early. You know, not not necessarily. Obviously, we'll look at it, and we're probably going to have to sign a few transfers. But you know, we also see that uh, there's so many guys, that, especially with the COVID year that that people had, and and us not being on the road as much or at all last spring, and then just a couple weeks. We were only on the road two weeks this year. I think there's a bunch of guys with really good senior evals out there that we've been communicating with that we know didn't sign, and so for us. We're going to go back out and see those guys, bring those guys in for visits in January. So there'll still be some high school kids we signed for sure. Uh, yeah, because of who Sterling is and his work ethic and his passion and his, uh, his ability to understand the game and um, his ability to always be working to improve. And, yeah, um, he just needs to be Sterling. That's the biggest thing. But watching him in camp and seeing the explosiveness uh, that Sterling has and the ability to run routes and catch the football, um, we're excited about, uh, uh, about him and, and uh, his, his future here. He'll, he'll have a big impact. Yeah, we, we will address it before February. Um, one of those things where we, in communications that Colin and I have had with uh, a number of quarterbacks, there's a lot of guys that didn't sign early. And I think that's a product of 
Um, kids having really good senior years that maybe nobody got a chance to see uh, as juniors because of the COVID year. Um, so, uh, no, it's an area we'll, we'll address in January. It's really daunting, and I guess the biggest thing, Fitz, that I'm that all of us are probably struggling with is, you know, there's kids entering the portal uh, today and tomorrow and the next day, and they can't go visit anywhere. So you're trying to just get to know those kids and get on Zoom with those guys, and then the previous two weeks there was kids entering it, and we had had our list of high school kids that a lot of these kids had either been committed to us for a while or we were trying to make sure and you know, finish up a visit and maybe beat one other school on. And then you have the transfer portal on top of that. Um, but it's not going to change. Uh, we, I hope, I don't know where this is going to go, I hope the signing date maybe gets adjusted a little bit so that from the coaching changes to the transfer portal and those things, I don't know how that's going to happen, but I hope it does so that we kind of get a, a cleaner slate for high school kids and then a cleaner slate for transfers. It will, um, but they haven't changed the roster management, you know. So if it were we can keep all the super seniors and have an additional seven guys, that's one thing, but you still have to keep your roster at 85. So that's where uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of a balancing act um, uh, with some seniors that are still deciding if they're going to come back for that super senior year. Um, and... A lot of that might not even take place and get finished up before the second signing period. It might still be into the spring or into the summer. But, um, yeah, we, we will probably take advantage of that. But I just, with the roster management, it's hard to say. And the scholarship clubs that are going on across the country, this is a small class as it sits now. And yep. I would imagine that's pretty common with other programs. Does that mean there's more viable talent for the late period than there has been the last few years? You know, I would say this year there is. Um, and I think to the point you started with, with the transfer portal, I think people um, maybe push the high school classes a little bit to the side. And I think high school kids, some of them signed early because they thought this is their chance to sign and I'm going to take something. And then some of them are waiting because, you know, some of these transfer kids are going to find a place to go and then there's going to be spots available. And um, I, I still think – we have to do a tremendous job of evaluating off of senior film. I still want to take a guy that's going to be here for four or five years as opposed to one or two years. And so uh, we were a week shorter than we typically are of being on the road. And we were only out two weeks. And uh, so it's really hard to get around to enough people. And so we've got to utilize that time in January and get back out and see these high school kids that have had really good senior years that held Pat. It is. We, we've assigned a couple of coaches that, that are quality control analyst type people strictly to the portal on one side of the ball or, or the other. Uh, and, you know, I'm on the road and getting a text, hey, this kid's in, here's his PFF, pro football focus, here's, his, here's 30 clips, here's 40 clips. You know, and in between schools, you get back to a hotel, you're – uh, you're, you're looking at your phone or looking at your laptop to open up and look at 20, 30 snaps and, yeah, like him, send him to Steve, send him to Joe, send him to Colin, whatever it may be, uh, and then trying to get a hold of those kids. But you're, you're also you know, pretty regimented with school visit, home visit, home visit. And, uh, no, it's, this two weeks was nuts, I got to tell you. Probably, and we've kind of started that last summer when it was when when we knew this was going to kind of blow up. So we do have one on each side of the ball, um, but they also are doing some high school things uh, as well. Um, but you know, I, I think what first has to get uh, figured out is the dates. You know, of when we're going to sign, or we're going to have an earlier signing period. Uh, that's kind of where I think it could be going. Have an earlier signing period. Uh, maybe early in their senior year or before their senior year and then push it back so that 
maybe kids, if they if they were entering the transfer portal, um, maybe had some more time to go. Wednesday and the and it, it's dead on Sunday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we could talk forever on it, Fitz. I'm, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, um, we think they have the ability to play tackle first, and if not, guard, as opposed to the flip side of, man, they're guards. Can we make them into a tackle? Cooper Beebe's a great example. Cooper's playing tackle. Um, we brought him in, I think, thinking he was going to be a guard, and then we were able to move him outside. Uh, where these guys were bringing in with the potential, we hope that they can play tackle, and if not, we'll slide him into guard. And so, you know, having that length um, with all three of those guys is important. And with your change of defensive alignment, where these guys fit, and it's uh, to recruit the linebacker. Yeah. Um, we think Toby and and Jake, for that matter, could be a Sam or a Will, um, be the space guy or be the boundary guy. And then um, Perry and Payne, we think, could play any of those three safety spots. Coach, with this being the first go-around that the recruits were named in his likeness, was that something that you ran across on the video? You know, a little bit. Um, it's out there for sure. But once again, being out there such a short period of time, it got brought up and we were able to at least give some data uh, of what some of our players had been able to do, uh, but we still can't control that. It still comes from you know their representation or um, them getting that s somewhat on their own. So we were able to show some data where where it's been effective and it's and it's helped. Um, I think it's just going to continue on as as we go through this too. And then I was going to ask about Jalen Clem being the son of a coach. Um, how are those conversations when you go into a home and you are talking? Yeah, um, Connor went to that one because I wasn't able to. I'll get there in January, um, but he and his mom came up here uh, on the visit, and you know, just like I would be, I want my coach to be, my son to be coached hard. I want him to be treated right, treated fairly, and I want him to be get, get into environments that he can develop, learn, be cared for, be loved, and that stuff. And that's the same thing his dad wanted. So had some good conversations with his dad, and um, he knew we had a pedigree with with. Um, getting NFL offensive linemen, and uh, um, I know that Coach Riley did a phenomenal job uh, with Jalen and uh, hit it off with him, and we were excited to sign him. Say that again. I'm missing your question. Uh, I'll. Um, I would say probably less, you know, trying to get the the right people in here first that can um, help us with K-State football and then uh, make sure that they're a fit to our staff, fit to our players, and uh, then then look and see, okay, where where do they feel more comfortable at? Because we can move, move people around. And if you can build relationships, I, I firmly believe you can recruit. It's been, it's been good. Um, once again, I still think we have a full month uh, to finish that off, but uh, I think it's, it's, we're off to a good start. Uh, just being around him uh, this weekend, <clears throat> excuse me, and then a few times on the phone uh, and, and talking ball with him. He understands the game really well. Uh, he was the quarterback of their defense, and they had a lot of checks and adjustments, and he had to be the guy that uh, helped some of the younger kids get lined up. And if you can communicate, which I saw uh, on film as well as I, as I witnessed with him on the board and stuff and talking to Coach Klanderman, uh, we need guys that uh, are confident, that already have been into a system that, you know, that's the hardest thing sometimes is, 
you know, I only played offense, and all of a sudden you're going to play me at defensive back, or you, know, you got him type of deal on defense. And this kid's been through a system where he's played a number of coverages, played a number of uh, um, man man situations and pressures, and had a lot on his plate. And uh, that's why we think he'll be a guy that can help us immediately. Chris, when you look at a guy like Jake Cook and, and DJ, DJ Payne, both of them come from pretty, like you mentioned, power high, powerhouse high school football programs. Um, does that give them a leg up when they come into a, a program like this? Um, you know, if they have the right mindset, it sure does. Um, but if anybody comes in here with the right mindset of, hey, I, I'm – don't know it all, uh, and I've got to learn. I've got to pay my dues, and I've just got to, you know, come down, put put my head down, and go to work, and, and learn the system, and get with Coach True, and get bigger and stronger, and listen to the older guys, and listen to the coaches. If you do those things, you're going to be successful. You are going to be successful. If you come in to any program and think you've already got it figured out, then you're going to be in for a rude awakening because college football uh, doesn't matter what level of college football. College football is just such a difference in what they're what they're used to as far as the amount of time that we spend with them. Way down, way down, yeah, and you know, same thing. I, I had been on the road for a week. We made the decision. Then I was on the road. I was on the road for another week, and now we're only at Wednesday, and it's signing day. So I really haven't, I haven't talked to anybody. I haven't given it much thought at all. Um, once again, I, I'm going to spend a lot of time with Coach Klein uh, during this during this period of bull prep and that offensive staff and uh, learn a little bit more about the things that we're doing that we really like, the things that uh, I would like to see us make some alterations on, and um, and then we'll evaluate it uh, after the bowl game. Is there any one thing you know you might be looking for in that area moving forward? I do, but I'll keep it between myself right now. <laughs> Chris, you kind of touched on, I think, maybe the very first question, but it, it sounds like you listen and you read and stuff like that. Coach Barry, uh, who's the executive director of ACCA, wants to introduce this thing what we're doing with early signing day at the fifth of January. It seems like, based off everything you said, that would be something you'd be – yeah, I haven't seen any dates at all, um, but you know, something's got to give here. Something's got to give from the from the coaching profession to um, the transfer portal, all that stuff. That's what's got to give. I just so I don't know where that's going to be at. Is it going to be earlier before a season starts? Is it going to be pushed back and just take it out of December so that you know from the transfers from the coaching chain? I, I don't know. I know that we're going to have some. Uh, pretty thorough conversations in January at our conventions. And then in an ideal world, just given the, the attrition you've already had at running back since the season ended, would the hope be to sign two of them before February? Well, we, we definitely need to, to look at running backs. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you know this, we've got a pretty good one. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> it uh, it's not easy to go and try to find a transfer um, because they want to be the guy, and uh, I'm not going to – I'm going to shoot him straight. We got a guy, and he's he's pretty dang talented. By the way, he was first-team All-American. So uh, we've got to look for some high school kids without without question, and that's something that uh, uh, we'll end up doing in January. Uh, we didn't answer that question now, but we will in January. Okay, so that's a good sign. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw something that Coach wants a July signing, too. Okay. Yeah, but, yeah, potentially. Um, I look at that, and we also want to get them here for a game day visit. That That is huge for us. We get kids here for game day visits. We've got a great opportunity at them. So I don't know. I think July might be a little bit early, but in the same respect, um, maybe it would clean some of it up, as well as maybe people wouldn't offer 500 kids because then they might fill up pretty quickly in July, because I'll take that. My kid would take it right now if he got it in, in July. Um, so that's where I'm not quite sure if that's if that's September 1. Uh, where is that date? Maybe it's nothing until January. I don't want to go back to February, as that's the only one, because you have kids committed a year in advance, and then you're kind of hanging on through all the way, up, all the way to February. Um, and I haven't – it's probably like the offensive coordinator. I haven't thought about the dates that much on it, uh, but it's something that I'm going to have to because I know we're going to have some pretty good discussions about it in January. On the other side, you just want to get through the bowl game. 
I do. Yep. And you mentioned running back is one position as an area of emphasis as corner another. I think uh, McAllister is probably going to. Yep. Yep. That's a that's another one. Uh, you know. A quarterback's one. We're always going to sign a quarterback in a class. I mean, that's our goal. It's always to sign a, a quarterback. Um, you know, we need to get uh, another linebacker, probably another safety. You know, those are just things off the top of my head. But we got to kind of see where this whole thing ends up here at the uh, right before semester starts. If we can get a few guys in here at semester, um, we'd like to. Um, if not, then we'll start hammering more of the high school guys in, until we get to the first February. Can you tell us how many of these guys are going to have on campus for the spring? Uh, I can't because I'm not 100% sure on it. Not many. Uh, it'd be just a, a, a few. I, I can't think off the top of my head which ones, but we just have a couple of them. Um, and uh, a couple of them are really good track athletes, uh, want to stay and, and run track. And, and I – that's not a deal breaker for me at all. I think it's an advantage, but I also know, uh, talking to a lot of moms out there, it's pretty important to have them to have their their sons with them for the for the semester. Got to be really, got to be really safe, um, and it's unfortunate what happened, um, and uh, um, I'm, I'm glad that it's moving forward on the, uh, the direction with arrest and stuff like that. But no, we, we've had a number of conversations about it. All righty. I don't know when I'll talk to you guys again if I don't have a good Christmas. Oh. So I'll see you next week. <laughs> I don't have any idea.